Chapter Eight: Sudden and Gradual Commentary. Sudden refers to the immediate understanding of a principle. You may be suddenly enlightened to a principle, but until you have been certified as one who is fully enlightened, you still must cultivate that principle gradually by putting it into practice in everyday life. Sutra. Why the patriarchs were staying, staying at Palin Temple in Sao Tzu, the great master Shen Xiao was at Yu Chuan Temple in Qingnan. At that time, the two schools flourished, and everyone called them Southern Neng and Northern Xiao. So it was that the two schools, Northern and Southern, were divided into Southern and Gradual. As the students did not understand the doctrine, the master said to them, "The Dharma is originally of one school. It is people who think of north and south. The Dharma is of one kind, but people understand it slowly or quickly. Dharma is not sudden or gradual. Rather, it is people who are sharp or dull. Hence, the terms sudden and gradual." Nonetheless, Shen Xiu's followers continually ridiculed the Southern Patriarch, saying that he couldn't read a single word and had nothing in his favor. But Shen Xiu said, "He has obtained the wisdom without the aid of a teacher and understands the suffering vehicle deeply. I am inferior to him. Furthermore, my master, the Fifth Patriarch, personally transmitted the robe and dharma to him, and not without good reason." I regret that I am unable to make the long journey to visit him, as I unworthily receive state patronage here. I, but do not let me stop you. Go to Sao Tzu and call on him. Commentary: You all remember Shen Xiao, the great master who was obsessed with the deadly ambition to be a patriarch. He was an intelligent man, and yet he couldn't cut off his his desire for the patriarchate. In the south, the safe patriarch taught the sudden drama to a flourishing assembly of over a thousand people. Shen Xiao in Qingnan was busy teaching gradual drama to an even larger crowd of over ten thousand people. Originally, Shen Xiao had about two hundred followers. But every day, more and more people came. However, everyone knew that the fifth patriarch had transmitted the robe and bow to Hui Neng in the south, in spite of the fact that Shen Xiao had been teaching master under the fifth patriarch and was extremely well educated. He did not have the transmission. Still, Shen Xiao's disciples advertised him as a sixth patriarch, and finally, even sent an assassin to. Trying to kill the master, incest the rope and bone. Because of the division into northern and southern schools, students of the way did not know where to turn. Should they study with the sixth patriarch? He was a illiterate, and sometimes his teachings seemed to contradict the scriptures. On the other hand, Shen Xiao didn't have the rope and bone. Seeing their dilemma, the master said. There is only one dharma. People may come from the north or south, but there is actually only one non-dual dharma door. Intelligent people understand it all of a sudden, and stupid people came to understand it gradually. But the dharma itself is neither sudden nor gradual. Still, Shen Xiao's men constantly made fun of the sixth patriarch. Hey, look at him! They said. He can't even read. The southern school disciples are following an illiterate. That is perfectly ridiculous. What could they possibly learn from him? Thus, they slighted the patriarch and his disciples, saying that they were ignorant, not having even one doctorate among them. Shen Xiao said, "Don't talk like that. He is an enlightened man. He has obtained wisdom through his own effort." Without the aid of a teacher, and has a firm grasp of the supreme vehicle. Frankly, I am not as good as he is. I do not possess his enlightened wisdom. Our teacher, the fifth patriarch, passed the wonderful mighty seal dharma on to him, and for a good reason. It was no accident. Shen Xiao was a national master. 
He and Master Laoan, Chu Xian, and Fang Chu were among the fifth but just ten great disciples. As they had received invitations to the Emperor Palace from Empress Wu Tai Wu Sai Tian, they received state patronage. Shen Xiao told his disciples, I can't get away as I receive state art here, but don't let me stop you. You may go to Sao Tzu and call on the great master. Actually, Shen Xiao was just testing his disciples to see whether or not they would go. He said that the sixth patriarch had more virtue than he, but what he really meant was, if you believe in me, you won't leave, even though he has more virtue, but if you don't believe, you will go as soon as I tell you to leave. Go. No one went. Sutra. One day, Shen Xiao told his disciple Chu Cheng, You are intelligent and very wise. You may, may go to Tao Tzu on my behalf and listen to the drama. Remember it all and take careful notes to read to me when you return. As honored, Chu Cheng proceeded to Tao Tzu and joined the assembly without saying where he had come from. The patriarch told the assembly, Today there is a drama thief hidden in this assembly. Chi Chang immediately stepped forward, bowed, and explained his mission. The master said, You are from Yu Chuan? You must be a spy. No, he replied, I am not. The master said, What do you mean? He replied, before I confessed, I was, but now that I have confessed, I am not. The master said, How does your master instruct his followers? Chu Cheng replied, He always instructs us to dwell in the mind contemplating stillness and to sit up all the time without lying down. The master said, To dwell with the mind contemplating stillness is sickness, not dhyana. Constant sitting restrains the body. How can it be beneficial? Listen to my verse. When living, sit, don't lie. When dead, lie down, don't sit. How can a set of stinking bones be used for training? Chi Cheng bowed again and said, Your disciples studied the way for nine years at the place of Great Master Xiao, but obtained no enlightenment. Now hearing one speech from the High Master, I am united with my original mind. Your disciples' birth and death is a serious matter. Will the High Master be compassionate enough to instruct me further? Commentary Chi Cheng was a good disciple to Shen Xiu, one of his favorites. You may represent me a Tao Su, Shen Xiu said. I cannot go. If I were to go personally, Hui Neng would surely recognize me and not speak the drama. Write down everything he says without getting one word wrong. Then bring back your notes and read them to me. When Chi Cheng asked for instruction at Tao Tzu, he didn't say where he was from. I've been here and there, he said, beating around the bush. That day, there were several thousand people gathered to hear the drama. The sixth patriarch announced, Everyone should be careful. There is a drama thief hidden in the assembly. Chi Cheng pushed his way through the crowd, bowed to the master feet, and said, I confess I'm a spy. Shen Xiao sent me here. The master explained the drama to Chi Cheng. Contemplating stillness is a kind of occupational disease, he said. It is not dhyana, as the constant sitting in meditation. This is a mere constraint on the body. What is the principle behind it? When you eat, just eat. When you sleep, just sleep. Don't lock yourself up. Shen Xiu was just working on his stinking skin bag. He didn't know how to work in the self-nature. That is sickness. The sixth patriarch worked naturally in the self-nature, and he spoke this verse to say, you sit up when you are alive. You lie down when you are dead. Your body is a bone bag composed of four elements. Why not work on the self-nature instead? To dwell with the mind contemplating stillness contradicts the principle of the Diamond Sutra, which tells us to produce that thought which is nowhere supported. The sixth patriarch spoke 
this verse to break Chen Chang's attachment to Marx. Shen Xiu taught people to dwell with the mind, contemplating stillness, and the Sixth Patriarch said that that was wrong. Nonetheless, if you can do it bit by bit, you will gain benefit. If you always sit and do not lie down, although it is not very natural, it will assist your body and mind in cultivation. Then, why did the Sixth Patriarch object to these practices? It was because Chu Cheng had just come from Shenzhou, and it was necessary to break his attachments before he could probably receive the genuine Buddha Dharma. In cultivation, you should not be attached to your work and think, "Look at me! I really work hard, constantly sitting and never lying down." Such thoughts will obstruct your progress. If the mind drops, it is attached. In order to be united with the original wisdom of the self nature, you must produce that thought which is nowhere supported. As the Diamond Sutra says, the Sixth Patriarch. Gave Chu Cheng his teaching in order to break his attachments. If you can constantly sit and feel natural and un- and unforced doing so, then go ahead. But do not force yourself. Force is not the way. You should work naturally. Good, you say. Then I don't have to follow the rules. This does not mean that you can can ignore the rules. If you lie down when people sit. And sit when they lie down. You are not in accord with the drama, and are just trying to show that you think you are special. In general, you must follow the rules and be natural with yourself as well. But being natural does not mean that you can break the rules. Is this clear? Chu Cheng had studied nine years with Shen Xiao. How many years have you studied here? One year, and you think that is a very long time. Cultivators may study for ten, twenty, or thirty years with great effort. You can't get get graduate in just a few months. As soon as the sixth patriarch spoke, his principles entered Chu Cheng's heart like water flowing into water, thirst, thirst, like milk mixing with milk. There was not the slightest difference between them. The patriarch's heart is my heart. Said Chu Cheng, and my heart is the patriarch's heart. I am suddenly united with the original mind because our minds are fundamentally one and the same. But I do not know when I will die. Chu Cheng continued, and I do not know when I will be born again. This matter of birth and death is most pressing. Please be compassionate and help me understand. Sutra. The master said, "I have heard that your master instructs his students in the dramas of morality, concentration, and wisdom. Please tell me how he defines the terms." Chu Cheng said, "Great Master Shen Xiu says that morality is abstaining from doing evil, wisdom is offering up all good conduct, and concentration is purifying one's own mind." This is how he explains them, but I do not know, High Master, what drama of instruction you use. The Master said, "If I said that I had a drama to give to others, I would be lying to you. I merely use experience to unite bonds and falsely call that samadhi." Your Master's explanation of morality, concentration, and wisdom is truly inconceivably good, but my conception of morality, concentration, and wisdom. Is different from his commentary. I don't have any dramas at all," said the sixth patriarch. "I'd be cheating you if I said that I did. I have no special dramas to give to people. For each individual, I use an appropriate teaching to unite his bonds. To unite bonds means to break attachments. The attachments of giving of living beings bind them up." I just untie the bonds and set them free of their attachments. Fundamentally, his teaching has no name whatsoever, but it is hypothetically called samadhi. Thus, my view of morality, concentration, and wisdom is special. It is not the same as Shen Xiao's. Sutra. Chu Cheng said, "There can only be one kind of morality, concentration, and wisdom. How can there be a difference?" The master said, 
Your master's morality concentration and wisdom guide those of the great Vihai Go, whereas my morality concentration and wisdom guide those of the supreme Vihai Go. Enlightenment is not the same as understanding. Seeing may take place slowly or quickly. Commentary When you become enlightened, in that moment of enlightenment, you attain your aim. Understanding, on the other hand, is a gradual process. Thus, perception may be sudden or gradual, faster or slow. Sutra, listen to my explanation. Is it the same as Shen Xiu's? The drama which I speak does not depart from the self-nature. For to depart from the self-nature in explaining the drama is to speak of marks and continually confuses self-nature. You should know that the functions of the 10,000 dramas all arise from the self-nature and that this is the true morality, concentration and wisdom. Listen to my verse. Mind ground without wrong, self-nature morality. Mind ground without delusion, self-nature wisdom. Mind ground without confusion, self-nature concentration. Neither increasing nor decreasing your vira. Body comes, body goes, the original samadhi. Commentary When I speak the drama said the sixth patriarch, I never stray from the self nature. When you stray from the self nature, you become attached to Marx and confused, confuse the self nature. All dramas are composed of the substance of the self nature and respond with unlimited function. Now listen to this. Mind ground without wrong, self nature morality. The mind is like a piece of ground. Whatever you plant in, it grows there. If you plant a good cause, you reap a good result in the future. If you plant a bad cause, you reap a bad result. Whether mind ground contains no thoughts of greed, malice, envy, or selfishness, it is without wrong thoughts, and that is the morality of the self nature. Master Shen Xiu said that morality is to abstain from evil. That is almost the same as the Sikh Patriarch's instructions to clear the mind ground of wrong thoughts. But Shen Xiu gave morality another name, calling it the abstention from evil. Why the Sikh Patriarch spoke of the morality of the mind ground, the morality of the self nature, mind ground without delusion. Self nature wisdom. When your mind ground is free of delusion, the conduct you offer can be extremely good, just as Shen Xiu instructed. But Shen Xiu merely passed out names. He did not speak of morality, concentration, and wisdom in terms of the self nature and the mind ground. Do not plant the causes of stupidity in the mind ground. That is a self nature's wisdom. Mind ground without confusion, self-nature concentration. When it is without confusion, the mind is purified. Shen Xiu's instructions to purify the mind did not relate concentration to the self-nature, whereas the Sikh Patriarch always spoke the Dharma from the mind ground. His Dharma arose from the self-nature and did not come from outside. Shen Xiu spoke about external Dramas and was attached to Marx. In other words, Shen Xiu spoke from outside the mind, the sixth patriarch spoke from within. Neither increasing nor decreasing, you are Vara. The brilliant light of the self nature illuminates everything. It is miraculous, profound, and all inclusive. The self nature neither increases nor decreases. It is your very own indestructible Vara. Body comes, body goes, the original samadhi. You go away, you come back, and you're in samadhi all the time, standing, sitting, walking, and lying down. Sutra Hearing this verse, Chu Chen regretted his former mistakes, and he expressed his gratitude by saying this verse. These five heaps are a body of illusion, and what is illusion? Antimethi. If you tend toward true suchness, the drama is not yet pure. Commentary The five skandhas are not real. The body, too, is false. 
merely a combination of the four elements. Knowing this, you should not attach to uh, attach so much importance to it by looking for good food, good clothes, a nice place to live, and a good wife or husband. How do the four elements combine to form your body? The earth is a hard part of your body. The skin, nails, bones, and muscles. Tear, tears, mucus, saliva, and excrement are the water, and your body heat is a fire. The circulatory and respiratory systems are the wind. If you, after you die, the body decomposes and the earth returns to the earth, the water to the water, the fire to the fire, and the wind to the wind. But where do you go? You don't know, do you? You are studying the Buddha Dharma just to understand this question. The body then is nothing but a transformation of the five skandhas and the four elements. And what ultimately is this illusion? If you tend toward true suchness, the drama is not pure yet. For you have not arrived at the root substance and you have not returned to purity. Why? Because you still have the thought, I'd like to go back to true suchness. If you have even one thought, you cannot penetrate the basic substance. Because the basic substance functions independently and freely without obstruction. There is no grasping or rejecting it, no thinking of this or that. Sutra, the master approved, and he said further to Chu Cheng, Your master's morality, concentration, and wisdom exalt those of lesser faculties and lesser wisdom. Why my morality, concentration, and wisdom exalt those of great faculties and great wisdom? If you are enlightened to your self-nature, you do not set up in your mind the notion of body or of nirvana or of the liberation of knowledge and vision. When not a single drama is established in the mind, then the 10,000 dramas can be established there. To understand this principle is to achieve the Buddha's body, which is also called body, nirvana, and the liberation of knowledge and vision as well. Those who see their own nature can establish dramas in their minds and not establish them as the truth. They come and go freely without impediments or obstacles. They function correctly and speak appropriately, seeing all transformation bodies as an integral with the self-nature. That is precisely the way they obtain independence, spiritual powers, and the samadhi of playfulness. This is what is called seeing the nature. Commentary, you're right, said the master, and your verse is not bad at all. You should know that my morality, concentration, and wisdom are not the same as Shen Xiu's. His teaching is for a pupil of lesser wisdom. Here the master describes the pupil of great wisdom for whom his teaching is intended. They have awakened to the self-nature, he said and they don't even entertain the notion of body, nirvana, and all the liberation of knowledge and vision. None of these dramas exist for them, not a single thing remains. Not one drama established, 10,000 dramas are empty. Because such people do not set up the notion of a single drama, they can set up the 10,000 dramas. Although not a single drama exists, the 10,000 dramas are present all the same. If you understand this principle, you may become a Buddha on the spot. Then you may call it Bodhi Nirvana or the liberation of knowledge and vision. You may call it anything you like, but first you must understand it. If you don't understand it, you can't call it anything at all. People of genuine enlightenment who have understood the mind and seen the nature can establish dramas or not establish them. They come and go without obstruction. You say, I'm this way too. If you want, I want to come to the Buddhist lecture hall, I come. If I want to go, I go. You're wrong. The sixth patriarch was speaking of freedom over life and death. With this kind of freedom, if you want to live, you live. If you want to die, you can die any place, any time, like the third patriarch, Sun Tan, who died of his own will, hanging by one hand from a tree. 
That's why I often say to you, everything's okay. If you're a master of this, you hold the power of life and death in your hands. Live or die as you please. No one can stop you. Freedom to come and go is not like your coming and going from the Buddhist lecture hall. People who see the nature function correctly and speak appropriately, seeing all transformation bodies as integral with the self-nature. They don't need to think, they just speak, but they always speak with principle. If someone asks you about the heavens and you reply, on earth there are mountains and rivers, or if they ask what is a horse, and you say oxen have to hunt, you're just confusing the issue and going against common sense. People who see the nature of ten independence just like Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, the spiritual powers that they obtain are the six spiritual powers, the heavenly eye, the heavenly ear, the knowledge of others' thoughts, the knowledge of former lives, the knowledge of the extinction of outflows and psychic power. One who has obtained the sound of playfulness sings, but not like other singers. He eats, but not like other pupils. For example, he may say, lunch time, let's eat, and then run to the table and eat every morsel of food inside. Then he'll say, the food is still in the kitchen. When everyone looks in the kitchen, the food is still there. He didn't really eat it after all. That is a lot of fun. Sutra Chu Cheng asked the master further, what is meant by not establishing? The master replied, when your self-nature is free from error, obstruction, and confusion, the prana is present in every thought, contemplating and shedding illumination. And when you are constantly apart from the dhyana marks and are free and independent, both horizontally and vertically, then what is there to be established? In the self-nature, in self-enlightenment, in sudden enlightenment, and in sudden cultivation, there are no degrees. Therefore, not a single drama is established. All dramas are still extinct, are still and extinct. How can there be stages? Chu Cheng made obeisance and attended on the master day and night without laziness. He was a native of Tai Ho in Chu Chou. Commentary, when there is nothing in your self-nature which is obstructive and or confused, what is there to be established? Confusion means upside down. You should not think that if your hand points to the earth, it is upside down, down, and if you raise it above your head, it is right side up. There is actually no such thing as upside down or right side up. Prana is present. In every thought, contemplating and shedding illumination. Similarly, similarly, the master said earlier, you should know that the self nature constantly generates wisdom. Further, you should be separate from any attachment to drama marks, and then you will be free to come and go. Vertically, if you want to jump, jump. Horizontally, if you want to move sideways, go ahead. Ascend into the heavens or plunge into the hells. Visit the western paradise or the eastern crystal as your world. You can go anywhere and always be in accord with the Dharma. So what Dharma is there to be established? That is why the Master says that not a single Dharma is established. You should enlighten your self-nature by yourself. If you are enlightened immediately, you will cultivate immediately, and there will be no question of sudden and gradual stages of progress. Therefore, no dramas are established, all dramas are empty, marked with still extinction. How can you arrange them in stages according to number one, number two, and so on? Hearing the master's instruction, the former spy defected and was converted to the master's teaching. He changed his mind and reformed his conduct, that is called going straight. He did whatever the patriarch told him to do, no matter how difficult, because he knew that the sixth patriarch had become a patriarch by doing bitter work, threshing rice at Huangmei, 
For over eight months, he thought, I have an opportunity to serve a patriarch and I should work diligently.